Okay, so today we are dealing with spelling the unspellable. And the idea is simple. Some applications don't have an embedded spell check. And of course, there are some ways to do a spell check on built in, on Windows applications like WordPad or Notepad. Uh, it's fine, but not all editors are like this. So, for example, this is the Publi. This is a static website generator, and it doesn't have any any spell checking. Right. So, what you heard right now, it's not just an error message. This is a spelling application that cannot integrate itself into a custom solution like this one, but still can sense whatever you're typing or copying and pasting to your report. And it would notify you that something is wrong. And if I want to see a suggestion, I just click on control semicolon and it would go and try to suggest something. So let's do a test post. Right, it found something here. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to check. And those are solutions. Of course, there is no autocorrect for auto post. And now let's and now let's start typing really fast and see how much time it will take me to make a mistake. Oh, still going. I was there. We go. And the latest mistake is I, misspelled I. So remember all those applications that cannot correct your uh, misspelled I when you do it in lowercase? This one actually senses it notifies you that you did it. Now, let's say I have a bunch of text that I'm really not really sure if I did it right or wrong. So we'll do it like this. We'll go to the, uh, yeah, let's go for ShareX. Right, and there is like a lot of text that I did here. I don't know if there are mistakes over here, but probably there are. There we go. So I click on suggestions and it would go and try to correct the first one it sees. So I'll add it to dictionary. Greenshot, add to dictionary. Snag it, add to dictionary. Screenshot, add to dictionary. Workflow, add to dictionary. Upload. So this was an interesting. Let's. This word is not part of it. OCR, add to dictionary, URL, add to dictionary. Okay, so as we go and proceed over here, it would start learning what is it, what kind of world words you're using. And eventually it would stop notifying you about those. It's a very, very quick way to do it. So how is it work? Does how does it work? So in general, there is like a small application that you download. And let's get oh yeah. Okay, so it's called Tiny Spell. I think it goes like this. Right, and this is the Tiny Spell. So there is a paid and a free version. I'm not really sure what uh, features it includes. So, uh, so many. Okay, so custom, well, better dictionaries, which would not prompt you on those words that you've seen so far. It uh, remembers the last errors, option and display type with instant correction. So, okay, so it's a little bit more invasive but functional in terms of what it can do for you. But the one, the free one, actually, it makes a pretty decent job uh, in keeping your, uh, you know, your spelling mistakes intact, at least on the basic stuff, right? So, how do you configure it? When you install it for the first time, and we're not going to deal with how to install and uh, download, you know, you just download and install it. So, that's it. And it goes immediately into your uh, small applications over here quick, with a quick access. So when you open it for the first time, uh, of course, you can check for updates and everything else. But the interesting thing is here. So tiny spell is normally enabled or disabled. And when it's enabled, it would actually try to uh, give you suggestions for everything, including the applications that already have a spell checker, right? And we don't really want that because sometimes we don't care. For example, Notepad or WordPad, well, I don't use WordPad, but Notepad, you don't care really if you made the mistake over there or not. You're not using it for typing. It's just for other stuff, right? But when you do the typing on stuff that doesn't support anything, for example, some windows that, uh, you know, you're trying to, Add a user with a description inside. If you're a sysadmin and the description has a spelling mistake, it's going to be a little bit embarrassing when somebody else finds out. But this thing doesn't have an embedded spell checker. 
that this thing actually allows you to go and select a application that is currently running and it would remember it forever. So you might notice that the feature resolve is not running here. You see it in my taskbar, it's not starting. It saved it, right? So you don't really need to go out of your way of finding this application in the program files, like some applications do, you know, for example, when you set up your firewall, like why can't I select a running application? Oh, I need to find the exact file to filter out. Let's have two options. No, instead you just have this, right? So we have all those applications, all those processes that are running. And you can also customize it in terms of disable the beep, disable the clipboard checking. If it's, for example, if you copy from someplace else uh, and you don't really want to have this beep for every time you copy from it, let's say comments in some, uh, I don't know, ID or something, then you just, you know, say, well, don't do the clipboard because sometimes I copy stuff that's not spelled right. Okay. And that's about it. Now, I think I did change a, uh, at least something over here. So it's running tiny spell at startup. Check spelling on the file, very useful. Although as we seen earlier, you don't really need to, to go and check every word that you type. Actually, it's very fast. It's much better to type everything that you want and then do the spell checking. So you have the option of disabling the beeping on error and only do this uh, when you have a copy paste situation but still kind of uh, it's, it's pretty nice okay i disable the check updates regularly i well i do like updates from time to time i don't like every single update and uh, i when i stumble upon my one of the applications that i need to change something i would just go and actually uh, check the updates manually. Sometimes it's better like this and it's completely fine. I mean, unless I'm missing a functionality that I expect to be developed, there's no reason for me to update. So this one is turned off. And of course, everything else is completely fine. Now, what else? Spelling tip, small, medium, large, huge, bold, text color, different. Okay, so the, the idea here is on applications that are familiar to the tiny spell it will actually go and put a little red bar on top over here where you type and it would actually show you what you're doing wrong but since i'm using publi or publi uh, which is a company kind of a completely new application to it based on something that i don't really know what kind of an engine this is Tiny spell just recognizes what you type and doesn't recognize the application in its full capacity, but it still doesn't lose its appeal because it has all of those variations of making your life easier with spelling. So you're not losing anything without the little red bar. But on some other applications that use native Windows stuff, native Windows libraries, you would actually see a little bit more information from Tiny Spell. So very much recommended. I really enjoyed this application. I hope you enjoyed it too. And see you in the next one.